Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing you guys a Predict That 11 video for our upcoming game against Liverpool this Saturday at 5pm. Now Conte did surprise us with a tactical change against the game against Carabat last night by switching to a 3-4-3 and most importantly using Eden Hazard as a false nine up front. But for this upcoming game against Liverpool, I do see Conte reverting from 3-4-3 back to 3-5-2 because obviously those extra men in midfield are going to be key to stemming Liverpool and obviously trying to win the game. I feel the upcoming game against Liverpool will be a great test to see how Conte will approach the big games using the system because as we've seen with the Spurs game and the Man City game, Conte has decided to use quite a negative defensive approach, but I really feel with this system, it can be a great offensive system due to the overloads it creates in the final thirds and the attacking support it generates as well. Before I get into the score prediction, please you guys, if you haven't pressed the bell notification sign, please press that. I'm gonna keep saying it all the time to remind everyone to stay tuned to all things Blue Lions TV. Now getting straight into the predicted squads. Starting with the goalkeeper, and Courtois of course will be starting the game. It's come out though that he hasn't signed an extension to his contract just yet, but if anything, if you ask in my personal opinion, I think him and his agent have decided to wait until the summer as a negotiation tactic to get a better contract. Now, why would he do that? Well, think about it like this. During the summer, clubs are definitely going to be interested and they're going to try and persuade Chelsea to sell. For example, Real Madrid have been a massive fan of Courtois and this effectively gives Courtois the leverage when it comes to negotiation proceedings. Why? Because he can take advantage of the interest shown from Real Madrid to really help them in this case to get a better contract. Moving on to the back three, starting with the right hand sides. Aspilicueta will regain his place in the team but really I'm hoping that Conte isn't going to use Rudiger on the right hand side and then play Aspilicueta on the right hand side. I really feel that if he was to do that he's really going to hamper our attacking play and that's really going to affect us in the game because really by us sitting too deep it does allow teams to come onto us and that really stops our wing backs from pushing forward and getting high up the pitch. And if they don't get high up the pitch then our strikers can't do anything because they have no support in numbers around them. Aspie's form has definitely picked up over the past month which has been great to see. He's defending in his more natural and comfortable areas where he's able to push out wide to help support with Zappa Costa and he's not getting exposed too much in those central positions. Now moving on to the middle of the back three and yes that is Andreas Christensen. It looks like Conte rested him with this Liverpool game in mind and honestly Christensen is going to be a world class player. I've been so happy with the signing and um, honestly it's been a matter of time. I remember back in the day when Mourinho wanted to bring in John Stones and even last season before that we were looking at bringing in Romain Noli and I was really disappointed with those links. Why? Because I knew that Christensen was a superior player to both as he's proven and it's like we could have affected his development really badly if we did sign those other two players and they would have blocked his path into the team. I think when Christensen naturally bulks up in the next two years he's going to develop that muscular frame. Once he has that power behind him he's going to be the most complete defender in the world. And finally, moving on to the left hand side, Gary Cahill will regain his place in the team. He was rested, unfortunately, Alonso was looking a bit tired, and Conte was obviously saving him for the game against Liverpool. Cahill's form has been decent recently, and I really think what's really helped him is obviously having Kante in front of him because that creates a passing option for Cahill because he knows that if he passes it to Kante, Kante isn't going to lose the ball. And at the same time, another thing helping him is that we're not conceding too many counter attacking opportunities, especially on either flank. And because we're not conceding counter attacking opportunities, that means that Kale isn't being exposed as he doesn't have to drift out wide to really support Alonso. Now, moving on to the wing back, starting with right wing back. And yes, finally, it looks like Victor Moses will be fit for this game. Obviously, Conte is anticipating his recovery for the game against Liverpool. And honestly, we've missed him quite a lot. Now Moses is one of the most underrated players in this country. It really baffles me as to why people don't really realise or notice his qualities. The guy really helps us play out from the back. He's got very great close control. He doesn't give away possession. He links up the play effectively 
He can dominate a flank by himself. He doesn't need attacking support at wide. And when you have a player of those dimensions, it really frees up and gives extra freedom for other attacking players such as Pedro, Hazard and the striker. And let's not forget the biggest thing is, is that the relationship Moses and Aspi have is probably the best defensive partnership I'd probably say in the league. Last year especially, no one got down that right hand side. And honestly, this season, I kind of feel that some of Aspi's poor form has come down to the fact that Moses hasn't been there in front of him. Because like I keep stressing, defending is a relationship, it's a partnership. It's not about just being individually good. You have to work in tandem. And honestly, Aspi, Lucreto and Moses work perfectly. Now moving to the left hand side, Marcus Alonso will play. He has come out stating that he has been quite tired and you guys to be honest I have been saying this for a while that it's obvious and it's clear that Alonso isn't fully fit because he is fatigued. Now there's a chance maybe that he might not play and I think if that was to become worst case scenario I think either Aspi Lucreta could play on that left hand side or I think Victor Moses and during pre-season especially Victor Moses was moved to the left hand side quite a lot and he was very effective there and you've got to remember too during his Wigan days he was playing on the left hand side even at Liverpool as well so he's comfortable playing on both sides of the pitch. Now moving to the midfield three starting with Kante in front of the back three now the genius of having Kante is that it really gives freedom to a lot of the players for example when we do attack with the ball we effectively become a 3-1-4-2 so it's no surprise that we do create those overloads in the final third and this is why players such as Fabregas and Bakayoko have freedom because they have the space to make late man runs. With Kante and the team, we're able to play out from opposition's pressing and we can play out from the back much better. Because Kante is a genius and because he has that Busquets like ability of controlling the ball with one touch and then passing it and it's a very fluid and fast move, he's able to get the ball to Fabregas much quicker who in turn is able to start spraying his Tom brady s passes. Honestly with Kante, he basically is the new Makaleli now. I've always thought that he could evolve into that role and I really feel that with his strengths it really benefits the team in general. Starting with the right hand side of the midfield three and that is Cesc Fabregas and Cesc Fabregas has been reborn in a way given now that he has more freedom and he has more passing options in front of him. Because we're now controlling the games much better and keeping the ball more, we're actually bringing out the best in Fabregas' strengths and I've been stressing this in so many live streams and videos, I've always got people commenting saying no Fabregas is poor because of this, because of that and I've explained the reason. Now everything I've said that Fabregas needs to succeed is happening and now he's getting a lot of praise for his performances. Moving on to the left hand side of the midfield three and yes Bakayoko will be playing and with Bakayoko as I keep stressing every video I'm going to shorten it because a lot of people are getting really annoyed that I keep repeating the same point but with Bakayoko he needs a lot of game time to really get used to the team and to improve as a player because he is quite raw I must say. I noticed all his uh, limitations last season for Monaco. Of course he's much better at focusing on one part of his game and that is winning the ball higher up. But even then when it comes to playing a more sophisticated tactical role, he's not there just yet and of course he's 22 years old. No one at 22 is a world class uh, DM or ball winning midfielder. It's a position that takes a lot of experience and a lot of game time to get used to. So patience is needed for Bakayoko but playing in this uh, midfield three, he does get a bit more license to roam forward which is better for him because then he isn't weighed down by having a defensive burden on him. Now moving on to the front two and it's obvious to me the best partnership so far in the league and that is Eden Hazard and Alvaro Morata. Honestly these two were really made for each other. Hazard is the most complete player I've seen for a while at Chelsea. He can literally do anything anywhere on the pitch. His ability to play people in. That game against Carabao last night he was the only one playing those final balls in with the perfect amount of weight. Of course that created the first goal because obviously he played Willian in and that created the second goal with that nice back heel flick. The guy can assist, he can score, he can beat a man, he can do everything. And as I kept emphasising a lot during the summer, I knew that with Eden Hazard playing closer to goal, you're going to see a more transformed, more clinical Eden Hazard. Now moving on to Morata, and yes, Morata had a disappointing game against Karabat last night, and I keep stressing that once he's able to take his first chance on goal, he's going to turn into a superstar. But at this moment in time, as I have been stressing throughout the summer and throughout the season, Morata is a very confidence-driven player. 
player. He needs too many attempts on goal before he gets that first goal. And honestly, to be a top class, world class striker, that isn't good enough. The beauty with Diego Costa was, was that with his first opportunity, he would get the goal. Of course, he wasn't necessarily getting too many chances per game, but you can see that that really makes a big difference because it really shifts the dynamics of the game. But again, we have to remember that when we signed Murata, we didn't sign the finished article. We signed a guy that can be the finished article in the next year or two. So that's the lineup I see Conte picking for the game against Liverpool. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup for the game against Liverpool. And the only difference I've made was replacing Gary Kale with David Luiz. David Luiz, in my opinion, can play on the left hand side. The guy does have a right foot and a left foot, which is never spoken about. And he is comfortable pushing out wide to help defend because he has made his name as a fullback before at Benfica and he's played on the left hand side for Brazil and Paris Saint-Germain so it's not alien for him. I'm really hoping this is going to be the future back three because they really complement each other. They can all play out from the back. Of course having Luis in that position will mean that he can push into midfield when he needs to and the beautiful thing is when you have Kante in front of the defence all Kante has to do at times is drop deeper whenever Dava Luiz pushes forward and the beauty of having Luiz in the team too is that it makes it even harder for opposition teams to man mark us and close us in. Why? Because really the best way to beat that is to really make your back three really push wide. So if David Luiz stretches out to the left hand side, Aspie on the right and Chris is in the middle, that defence is technically good enough to keep possession and be able to manipulate the ball. I hope you guys enjoyed that Predict That 11 video for our upcoming game against Liverpool. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'm going to keep saying it if you haven't pressed the bell notification sign which is the icon right beside the subscription tab please press that and stay notified to all things Blue Lines TV. I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lines TV, signing out.